going to read in verse 1. And I'm enjoying the book of Acts. How about you? It, it reads this way. It says, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. Notice here a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. And about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. And when he observed him, he, he was afraid. And he says, what is it, Lord? So he said to him, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodging with Simon a tanner whose house is by the sea. He will tell you what you must do. Now go to verse 9. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And then he became very hungry and he wanted to eat. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and an object like a great sheep bound at the four corners descending to him and let down to the earth. And in it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And a voice came to him and he said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But look at what Peter said, and this is the part I want you to catch. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I've never eaten anything common or unclean. And a voice spoke to him again in the second time. And this is what the voice said. What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Say that with me. Say, what God has cleansed, don't call common. And this was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven again. Look at your neighbor this morning and tell him there's a blessing beyond the four walls. You may be seated this morning. I've been telling our guys, Pastor Chris and the guys, Aldo, I said, I want to preach this message. I've had this sermon ready for about five weeks and I've just wanted to minister this message to you because I believe it's going to open up our hearts and it's going to speak to us this morning. How many are ready? In this story, God gives Peter a vision, a vision. And in the vision, he lays out all these foods, these numbers of foods. Now, don't get hungry on me. I know it's been a long service and some of you are already thinking about what you want to have for lunch. But God begins to lay out a number of foods in which Peter immediately rejects. And he tells God this. Peter tells the, the angel this. He says, I've never touched or eaten anything that is common. And what Peter was actually telling the angel is that as a believer, I've adhered to the strict dietary restrictions of the Jewish law. Now, how many know the Jews really had some strict dietary restrictions? Stuff they couldn't touch. Stuff they couldn't eat. And Peter looks at the angel and says, I've always been faithful to the Jewish law. But this is where God begins to step in. And he tells Peter something very critical. And I believe that God is saying that very same thing to us. He says, don't call anything that I've created common. Don't call anything that I've ever created. And he even says cleansed. Don't call it common. And what God was actually doing for Peter in this portion of scripture is he was giving Peter a fresh vision. I think this is important. I think church people need to hear this message this morning. I think religious people need to hear this this morning. Because how many know God won't hesitate to give us a fresh vision? God was speaking to Peter and he was giving him a fresh paradigm. He was causing him to have what's called a paradigm shift. And I really also believe that he was giving Peter a new wineskin. God was doing something new in Peter's life. Because what God was about to do through his son, Jesus Christ, was he was about to unlock a new dimension of the vision that he had all along. He was about to unlock to Peter and the church and the apostles a new vision that he had all along. But I want for a moment for us to look at the word common. Everybody say common. 
I think the word common is a dangerous word. It's a dangerous word for a Christian. It's a dangerous word for a church. Because the attitude of common will stop the church from fulfilling Christ's mission. The attitude of common will stop a Christian from being everything that God has called that person to be. And how many know God has given us a mission? And the word common, the attitude of common, or a common mindset, is a mindset that could hinder us from being and doing the things that God has called us to do. It's Christians who take a common attitude towards precious things. I'm preaching already. It's Christians who take a, a common attitude toward God's things. It's Christians who take an attitude of common towards spiritual matters. And I came to tell you this morning, if you're here and you're beginning to develop a common attitude, you are in a dangerous place. Because I came to tell you this morning, there's nothing common about the Christian life. Come on, help me. I came to tell you there's nothing common about this gift that God has given us. There's nothing common about the gospel. There's nothing common about this thing called salvation. There's nothing common about the church of Jesus Christ that Jesus shed his precious blood for. Come on and help me this morning. Don't let it become common. Don't let the gift of God become common. We should never treat this salvation as common. We shall never treat this joy as common. We shall never treat this faith that we have as something that is common. We should never treat the strength and power that we have that the world does not have as common. Is there anyone here that can give God glory that he didn't give you something that's common, but he gave you something that's uncommon this morning? Come on and thank him right now. Don't call this life common. Don't call this Christian walk common. Don't call this gospel common. Don't call this holy fire of the Holy Spirit common this morning. I came to tell you this morning, your life is no longer common. Your life is no longer common. And here's what I tell you. If you've been cleansed in the blood of Jesus and filled with the Spirit of God, you'll never be able to be common ever again. Oh, my God, you need to get excited about it because he's given you a purpose. He's given you a power. He's given you a destiny that the world seeks after. Don't call it common. Your life is not common. You're living a very powerful and purposeful life. You may not feel like it this morning, but I came to tell you it's not your feelings. It's the truth. Your life is powerful. Your life is purposeful. God has given you a vision, and God has given you a destiny. Don't call it common. Don't call your life common because your life has been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Your life's not common because the cross of Calvary was not common. And the blood of Jesus is not common. See, God was about to open up the kingdom to the Gentiles because the Jews were, were too common. <laughs> they considered the Gentiles common themselves. They considered the Gentiles the outcast of society. They even considered the Gentiles or non-Jews to be dogs. But you know what God was telling Peter in this vision? I'm about to give the kingdom to the dogs. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I'm about to give the kingdom to the dogs. And what God was telling Peter, he was simply inviting him to be a part of it. God was going to do it anyways. He was simply inviting Peter to be a part of it. How many of you want to be a part of what God is doing? He was inviting Peter to come along for the journey to be on the ride. Because this was always God's plan. Jesus didn't just come to die for the Jews. He came to die for everybody. He came to die for all mankind. And God was about to take, watch this. This is powerful, man. I know my voice is not letting me preach the way I want to preach, but I'm going to just lay it all out. 
Maybe y'all can help me preach a little bit this morning. But what God was about to do is he was about to take what man called common and do something through them that the world has never seen before. He was about to take what man called common and begin to do uncommon things. Because you know that in the book of Acts, these were people that saw uncommon things. They experienced uncommon things, and they also moved in uncommon things. They moved in uncommon miracles. They moved in the supernatural, which was uncommon to the Jewish believers. And I came to tell you, if God was doing it then, he's still doing it now. I believe that we are living in the days where God wants to pour out a new anointing. He wants to pour out a fresh revival. He wants to use your life. He wants to empower you this morning. Don't let your walk with God become common. Those of you that are clapping, you say, I'm surely not going to let it become common, Pastor. Because the cross was not common. You see, Peter had a, Peter, uh, God was about to take what man called common and do through people what was uncommon. And when I think about this story, I can't help but to think of the ministry of Victory Outreach. I can't help but to think about our ministry. How many of you love our ministry? And I don't, I don't care what anybody says about our ministry. I don't care what they try to say and try to talk about us. Our ministry was birthed out of the book of Acts. Our ministry is a book of Acts, end times, Holy Ghost ministry. I mean, just think about the vision that God gave Pastor Sonny. My goodness. How many know that that was an uncommon vision? I couldn't think, he, even he will tell you that in those days, there was nothing more uncommon than to have a vision of a church full of drug addicts and people coming out of prison. I know you see it all over today. You, some of you have been around a lot of churches. They try to do this type of ministry. But the reason we've been effective at it for over 50 years is because our vision is not a vision of man. It's a vision of God. Come on, help me this morning. It's a vision of God. God gave our founder an uncommon vision. And you know what Pastor Sonny had? He had a Peter experience. He had a Peter experience. He, he, would, he told Julie, he goes, I need to go to San Diego to separate and pray. Because he was frustrated in his ministry and he didn't know what God wanted to do. He separated here to the city of San Diego and he began to seek God's will for his life. And it's in this city where God told him, I'm going to raise up a church with treasures out of darkness, hidden riches in secret places. I'm going to raise up a ministry and it's going to glorify my name all over the world. Don't tell me that's a common vision. Don't tell me that's a vision that everybody has. That's an uncommon vision. And guess what? 50 years later... We're still here doing the same thing because God gave us the vision. And you know what? You want to know what? You want to know what? Some people call this common. Some people said, what good could come out of the hood? Some people said drug addicts can never change. Some people said gang members can never change. Some people said ex-criminals couldn't be used by God, but look what the Lord has done. You need to give God praise for an uncommon vision. Woo. And you want to know what else? You want to know what else? You want to know something else? We're blessed. Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie, they're going to be here in two weeks. Guess what? They're blessed. The people that serve in this ministry, guess what? They're not struggling. They're blessed. The pastors of Victory Outreach, guess what? They may not have the biggest churches in the world, but they're blessed. Why? Because when you do God's vision, you will be blessed. God, we take care of people that do his vision. And guess what? You want to know something else about this church? This church, right here, your church, your church is blessed. Come on and give God praise. Your church is blessed. You know why we're blessed? 
Because we're doing the vision. Because we're doing what God has called us to do. We haven't veered. We haven't strayed. We haven't gotten off track. There's been a strong foundation. But there's also been a vision. And after 35 years, we're still doing what God has called us to do. I know some of you, you know, you come and go, you come and go, and you can come and go all you want. It doesn't matter to me. We're still going to be doing what we're called to do. And next time you come back, we'll be here doing the same thing because we're blessed. Because when you're obedient to what God has called you to do, God begins to bless you because you're doing his will and not your own. And here at Victory Outreach, we're not doing our own will. We're doing God's will. We're reaching the treasures out of darkness. We're raising up disciples. We're planting churches. We're reaching the world. Come on, somebody. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. Because we're doing the uncommon vision. Oh, my God. That's what we should call this message. The blessing of the uncommon vision. The blessing of doing the uncommon vision. See, but I want to tell you about this blessing. According to this scripture, the blessing is not just here, but the blessing's out there. We're blessed in here, aren't we? You guys look great. But how many know the blessing's not just in the four walls of the church? How many know the blessing is outside the four walls? How many know the blessing's out there? Tell your neighbor the blessing's out there. The blessing is not just to sit in the four walls, but it's to get outside the four walls. That's what God was trying to tell Peter. It's not just to the Jews, it's to the Gentiles. It's not just to the church in Jerusalem, but it's to the church in Antioch and Ephesus and Corinth and Thessalonica and Colossus. Come on, somebody. The blessing's not just here in Jerusalem. The blessing is outside these four walls. And I think we need to understand that. That when God gives you his vision, his vision doesn't keep you in the same place. It always moves you beyond your comfort zone. It moves you outside of what you're used to. Because it's not a common vision. It's an uncommon vision. See, we're not blessed. Watch this. This is so good, man. Let me say this to you, church people. We're not blessed when we get. We're blessed when we give. It's not, we're not blessed, pastor. We're not blessed when we take. We're blessed when we send. Look how many leaders I have in my church. It doesn't, you're not blessed when you have a lot of leaders. You're blessed when you raise those leaders and send them out. We're blessed not when we take, but when we give. Can I hear an amen? You see, there's a few things we can see in this story. And and I I think this is going to be a message about blessing. I I really do. Because I want to tell you that God blesses you when you're obedient to his vision. There's three things I want to bring out out of this story. Number one is that we are blessed when we have a vision for lost people. We're blessed. How many of you want to be blessed? Okay, God bless a few of you. How many really want the rich blessings of God in your life? Then then understand that we get blessed when we have a vision for lost people. Who is Cornelius? We could see in this story not only Cornelius' conversion, And not only his cause, but thirdly, and and what I want to bring out here is we can see Cornelius' character. There was a few important traits about Cornelius that I think will teach us something is that Cornelius had excellent character. He was a Roman centurion, according to the scripture. He was a leader. He was also good and, and very devout, as the Bible says. We also see that Cornelius was unique because he worshiped the one true God. Now, being a Roman... The Romans were pagans. They worshiped many gods. Many of you studied Roman mythology, and, and they worshiped the god of the moon, the god of the sun, you know, all these different gods. Well, Cornelius was different. While everyone worshiped other gods, Cornelius worshiped the one true God, Jehovah God. 
And not only did he worship God, but his whole family worshiped God. He feared and reverenced the things of God. Fourthly, we also see that Cornelius had great character because he gave generously to charity. He assisted the poor. He gave alms. And then lastly, he prayed regularly. And he was a real prayer warrior. He didn't just pray, you know, regularly or just daily or often. He prayed three times a day. So when you take a look at, at Cornelius' life, you find a man that had stellar character. But we should also know that in spite of his stellar character, he still fell short. His works could not get him into heaven. His good deeds could not get him into eternal life. Even though he had stellar character and he had a true uh, desire to serve God, he still was not washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. He had as wonderful as all these things that Cornelius did and had. Cornelius, listen to me and hear me clear. Still wasn't saved. And I think we know people just like that. We know people just like this. See, <coughs> there's a difference. It's one thing to be lost and know it. Just like some of us when we got saved. You got saved because you were lost, but Jack, you knew it. You knew you did that crime. You knew you burned that person. You knew you needed deliverance. But there are people out there right now that are lost, and they don't know it. Cornelius was lost, but he did not know it. There are people out there that have it all together on the outside. All together, they might even have education, have some money in the bank. They might even come to church and bless us with their presence every now and then. Check in on Facebook. But they're lost and they don't know it. And we have family members sometimes that try to intimidate us to think that we need Jesus and they don't. Oh, my God. Come on, help me this morning. You were a drug addict. You needed Jesus. You were a gang member. You needed Jesus. But, brother, I don't care how much money you make. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. And if you want to be saved, we all got to come through the same door. We've got to come through the door of repentance. We've got to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And what am I saying to you is we need to start praying for our family members that they think they have it all together. we got to start praying for their marriages, praying for their children. I don't care how much education they have. They still need to come to the cross. They still need to surrender to the Lord. Woo. Every one of us has a Cornelius in our family. See, we need to pray for them. That's why I think some of you need to have a Peter moment. I think some of you need to have a paradigm shift. Some of you need to have a fresh revelation because we're not just called to reach the worst. We're also called to reach the ripe. Maybe some of those people in your family are wondering why you never talk to them about the Lord. You, you see them on Thanksgiving. They know you're in church. They know you're saved. They know you're committed to Victor Outreach. They know you're sold out VO. You throw up the V and the O. They know what you're about. <laughs> but have you ever considered that maybe they wonder why you never witness to them? Why you never say, have, uh, have you ever received the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior? Have you ever come to the foot of Calvary? Have you ever said, the, I, I know you're a good person, but don't you know that you're a Cornelius? And works aren't going to get you to heaven. Mm, you ain't saying nothing to me. See, I'm trying to give you a paradigm shift this morning. See, we need a fresh vision for our families. We need a fresh vision for the lost, they might have it all together on the outside, but on the inside, they are very empty and they are very hurting. You saw it on the news. My wife mentioned it earlier. I had it in my notes about the different the celebrity business people and personalities that commit suicide. 
million dollars isn't going to make you happy. Driving a Bentley is not going to make you happy. You can have the finest apartment in all of San Diego, and you're not going to be happy. You know what's going to, the only thing that's going to make you happy is going to be the plan and purpose of Jesus within your life. Come on and give him a praise if you have believe, at least believe that. See, why is Cornelius great? Because Cornelius was ripe and ready. He was a seeker. He wanted God. He was hungry. He was doing all he could. And I came to tell you, they're out there. <coughs> they're out there. Sometimes we evangelize, just give flyers to people that don't want them. When you could give that flyer to that person that's, that's out there that says, I've been wanting someone to talk to me about the gospel. That's why if you're going to hit the streets and win souls, don't just go out there and canvas with flyers. Pray. Ask God to give you a soul. Ask God to give you someone who's ripe. Ask God to lead you to somebody that has built a memorial before the Lord that needs a preacher. That needs a preacher. That needs someone with an anointing. Not a leader who's appointed, but a leader who's anointed. They're out there. They're in the prison system. Yes, they are. They're in the halfway houses. Yes, they are. They're in your schools. Yes, they are. They just had a breakup. They just had their heart broken. They're struggling with depression. They're out there. But you've got to pray, and you've got to be the person that God uses to go out there and to pull them in. Can I hear a good amen? Come on and clap for the Lord right now. <laughs> Don't look at these people as common. Don't look at evangelism as common. But look for those that are ready and ripe. Can I hear an amen? amen? See, when we get out of these walls, we will be blessed. The second thing here, how many of you want to be blessed? Amen. Is we're blessed, secondly, when we pursue lost people. It's not just to have a vision for lost people. But he wants us to personally pursue lost people. He wants us to go out there and to do what he said in Mark 16, 15. Go ye into the all, all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. When you take the word world, in the original language, it's the word ethnos. Ethnos, meaning ethnicity, the root word for ethnicity, ethnos. And that tells us if we want to be blessed, we must build the church the way God wants it built. God wants us to have a church that's full of ethnos. Full of ethnos. What is ethnos? Ethnos is that he wants us to have a diversity. If we want to be blessed, the church should not be one color. Just Mexicans? Just beans and rice at every meal? Just tacos every Wednesday night? That's not the way heaven's going to look. Some of you think, oh, that's it. No, it's not. Every tribe, every tongue, every ethnicity is going to worship God together on one sound. I feel like I got to say it because some of you just want to stay stuck in one culture. And I came to tell you, if we're going to be, be blessed and be a blessed church, you've got to get out of that single-minded mentality when it comes to culture. God spoke to Peter because Peter was a racist. He says, don't call something that I've cleansed common. Ooh, it's quiet in here. The church shouldn't be one language, one color, 
one, economic status. The church should be filled with ethnos. And we should not just expect them to walk in. We've got to get up and go out and grab them and bring them in. We've got to bring them in. We've got to let them know the miracle that God has done within our life. Some of us right now, we need to tear off the limits. We have too many limits on our life, too many limits on our thinking, too many limits on our mentality. That's what's Peter's problem. The kingdom could not expand through Peter's limited mindset. Are you hearing me right now? And this word should challenge us this morning to take off the limits of not only who God calls you to reach, but how God calls you to reach them. Not only who God calls you to reach, but how God calls you to reach them. In Mark 16, when he said, go ye into all the world and preach, notice he wasn't clear about how they should go. He didn't tell them to go by boat. He didn't tell them to go by horse and carriage. You want to know why? Because of religious people. Because if he told them to go by horse and carriage, it'd be 2018, and you'd still be going by horse and carriage. And if he told them to go by boat, you would still be looking for a boat. Can I hear an amen? But he put no limits on evangelism. Because he knows how we think. He knows we easily get stuck in mentalities. He knows we easily get stuck in, 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 in cultural distinctives. He knows we easily get stuck in these different inferiority complexes. And what God is saying to us as a church is if we want to be blessed, we have to stop looking at the limitations and start looking at the possibilities. I'm going to say it again. If we want to be blessed as a church, we have to stop looking at the limitations and start looking at the possibilities and recognizing that every time we've stepped out as a church, God has been there to meet us. Every time we've taken a step of faith, God has been there to meet us. Everything we tried to do something new, God has been there to meet us. Every time we've stepped out and been innovative, God has been there to meet us because God says, I'm raising up a church in San Diego that doesn't look at their limitations, but they look at the possibilities that I'm the God of the impossible. I'm the God of the supernatural. I'm the God that is able. Woo. Stop saying you can't. And start saying I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Don't put limits on yourself. I don't care what background you come from. I don't care what country you come from. I don't care what your economic situation is this morning. I came to tell you, don't look at the limitations. Look at the possibilities. He wants to use you. You're going to break barriers. You're going to make an impact. You're going to shake the world for the glory of God. We need some people in our church that will start dreaming like never before. Start recognizing that when we pursue the lost and we pursue the hurting and we do all we can, that God always blesses us. Every time we have stepped out by faith, God has always blessed our ministry. I came to tell you, I'm not scared. And if I'm not scared, then why are you? I'm not scared to pursue the vision that God has given me. And if I'm not scared, then why are you? I'm starting to walk into this building and get frustrated. I walk in here and I say, this place is tiny. I feel like I'm in a box. They got me preaching at 8, 10, 30, 12, 45, 6 p.m., 5 p.m., 4 p.m. They're going to kill me. And I don't walk in here getting blessed because I know God hasn't called us to be stagnant. I know that the only way we're going to be blessed 
is if we stop looking at the limitations and start looking at the possibilities and start saying God wants to do more. When we begin to step out in greater faith, when we determine that we're going to bring in all those pledges, start doing all that stuff, and start saying, what if? Someone say, what if? What if God wanted to give us a $20 million facility? If he could do it for that church, then why can't he do it for us? What if God wanted to give us a 2,000-seater? See how some of you can't get it because you're stuck. You say, not me because I'm, you know, I came from this. And not see, you're stuck. You need a Peter experience. We serve a God that wants to do uncommon things to a common people. Can I hear an amen? What if? What if we had the facilities to seat 2,000 people? How many more families could we reach? How many more people could come in and help us to finance the gospel around the world? Can I hear an amen? See, we've got to stop looking at our limitations and start looking at the possibilities. And if we begin to not only look at the possibilities, but lastly, step out on the possibilities, that's when the blessing's going to come. That's when the blessing's going to come. What's the final thing as Matthew begins to make his way? It's not only are we blessed when we have a vision for the lost and when we pursue the lost, but lastly and finally, we are blessed when we connect and disciple lost people. When we connect and disciple lost people. Why, why, what are we trying to do here? What does the book of Acts teach us to do here? It's not just to win souls, but how I many it's also to make disciples. How many of you got blessed when you saw the women come up here and graduate today? Yeah, blessing. I, I, I can't get enough of it just to see how people have a hunger to grow and to be everything God has called them to be. And what I love is that they don't keep it to themselves. They, they share it with others. And I'll tell you, if we want to be blessed, it's not just to, to have a vision for the lost and to pursue them. But if we want to be blessed, we must also connect with them and disciple them. See, God wants us not just to reach the worst. He wants us also to reach the ripe. Are you ripe? Are you ripe? Are you hungry for the things of God? Are you trying to get closer to the Lord? Are you actually praying and reading God's word? Are you actually coming to church with a hunger to learn and grow? Or is this all religious exercise? Is this all conscience cleansing stuff? Or are you a person that says, no, I want to be a Cornelius. I want my family to serve God. I want to teach my children to serve the one true God of heaven. I want to see miracles in my family. I want to, I want to be everything God has called me to be. See, we can't just look for the worst. We've got to look for the right. And we've got to begin to identify who's ripe, who's ready, not just to be saved, but to also be discipled. We've got to find the ones that are hungry, watch this, to be pulled in. I've been talking to some leaders lately, and they say, you know, Pastor, I'm really struggling, man. I try to build my group, and I text people, and they don't text me back. What do I do? Stop texting them. <laughs> I mean, what are you texting them for? They don't want it. All the energy you give to this guy that doesn't want it, you got a guy over here that's a Cornelius that's praying that someone will meet him halfway. See, God's looking for someone that will meet him halfway. And he's looking for the ripe heart. He's looking for the person that will respond not only to salvation, 
but to God's plan. See, why was Paul so powerful? Not only because his encounter with God, but because Paul was willing to do what was next. When he told him, go to Ananias' house. Go meet an Ananias halfway. And when you get there, you're going to experience a new level. And when he connect with Ananias, you know the story. The scales were removed from his eyes. And, 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 and it tells us that he spent some days there with the believers and Ananias. And he was nourished in the gospel. And Saul went from being Saul to being Paul. And Paul became a powerful man for God's glory. What became of Cornelius? See, Cornelius was ripe. He was ripe. And what became of Cornelius, tradition tells us that at once he was saved and he went all in, he became the first bishop of the church. The first bishop of the church. Imagine that Cornelius went from being, from leading the armies of Rome to leading the armies of God. Are you ripe? Or do you just come to church on Sunday and this whole thing's common? Is there anyone here this morning with an uncommon hunger for God, an uncommon heart to be everything that God has called them to be? Something happens when you let go of your plans and you take care of, you take hold of God's plan for your life. Something begins to happen. Stop looking at the limitations and start looking at the possibilities. Why am I here today? Because there was a man that said, if you'd be willing to meet me halfway, I'll pray with you and read the word with you. And I did that. That man went on to be with the Lord. I'm still here today. But if it wasn't for him, I would not be here today. And I'm grateful because I was a Cornelius. I was an Ananias. I was a Paul. I was just hungry for God to move in my life. How many of you want to be blessed? How many of you want to be blessed? I want you to stand with me. See, I believe there's two types of people. There's some of you here this morning that you've allowed the things of God to become common. And you haven't shared your faith. You haven't spread that love. There's people in your, in your family that God, you know God's calling you to reach them. And this message was for you to stop calling those things that God has cleansed, common, and start 